Hello everybody and welcome to Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Tiffany. We're going to be talking about static and connected to it, the Milestone universe. Um, is anybody familiar with static? No. A little. I watched the, the cartoon. cartoon. Mm. And I don't remember too much about it. I just really liked his character and who voiced him? Phil Lamar. Yeah, Phil Lamar. He did a really good job. Yes. Like, I don't know. I just remember really liking it. Yeah. And like the look and like the way that they did the animation for it. Like mm -hmm. there's just a really cool stylistic choice that yeah. they made for it. In 2000, they, inv they, they released a show on the Kids WB called Static Shock, which starred a African-American boy who lived in the DC universe. Okay. And I've heard of Static Shock. Yes. That's, like the phrase. I yeah. never knew what it was. Right. Well, in, in the comics, in 1993, Dwayne McDuffie and a handful of other black comic book creators, which includes the likes of Dennis Cowan, Michael Davis, and Derek T. Dingle, essentially decided to create their own publishing company. And so they invented Milestone Comics. Uh, in fact, noted black creator Christopher Priest was supposed to be the editor-in-chief, uh, but he left before oh. they could do that. Mm. And uh, so Dwayne McDuffie became editor-in-chief of that uh, company. Okay. And spearheaded pretty much everything that came out of Milestone at that point. Uh, to offset cost and to uh, get out, uh, they made a deal with DC Comics, um, which is why Milestone is intrinsically connected to DC, despite the fact that in the beginning, uh, all they were doing was being technically published by DC, but they were their own entire separate company. Okay. Like, Milestone was a comic book publisher, mm -hmm. and, they li and DC licensed the ability to print their books. Okay. But they had no editorial control over anything right. that happened at Milestone. Mm -hmm. So they just, Milestone needed somebody to print books because yes. they didn't have a printing press. Exactly, yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, and no distribution method. Right. McDuffie and his fellow creators invented like a universe of characters set in what they dubbed the Dakotaverse. Essentially, it's just a Midwestern city called Dakota. Okay. Oh, it's, okay. It's just Detroit. Sure. Okay. But you know, fictitious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so it actually fits really well. It's not in the DC universe at all, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, when it first started out in 1993, uh, the Dakota verse was just a, a, a you know a grouping of superheroes that were in their interconnected universe, uh, and they happened to be people of color. Uh, I know that like it's considered to be a groundbreaking like black oriented comic book universe slash publishing label, mm -hmm. but I know that McDuffie wanted it to be considered to be just a comic book publishing label. Like, he definitely was like, right. I want to give work and, like, attention to people of color in comic books, but he really wanted to push, like, diversity, mm -hmm. that it wasn't going to be noted as a black book, right. so to speak. Uh Incidentally, like its, its origins would be that, but yes. ultimately, it would ultimately just be just a be, regular. It would be company. synonymous with any other series. Yeah. If you are a person of color and you grew up in the '90s, you may have found this, and you may have had a strong connection to it because it's a person that looks like you doing the things that you know normally were occupied by white people, like mm -hmm. Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, that kind of thing. Right. Comic book retailers kind of looked at it as a black book or black th that's the company that makes the black comics right or the comics for black people right and it's like McDuffie's like it, it, everyone it's, can read they're, it they're comics for everybody yeah. but a number of characters came out hardware icon and static and when they developed it oh man the development of Milestone is fascinating because like there is more planning effort and thought that went into the development of the Milestone universe than DC has put into anything over the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, like, McDuffie pretty much wrote the Bible of the Dakotaverse and had, like, like character designs and, like, origins and timelines and, like, directions and, you know, like, just... When you want to write a character, here's the universe. Right. Read here's it. Here's all the backstory. Yeah. yeah. Or if you want to help develop it, you know, you got to add to the Bible then. Right. But read this and understand it. And it was like, well, it's like someone knows what they're doing. Right. <laughs> and McDuffie, of course, was well, a genius. Well, that's a lot of work, like, though. Well, why would I do that? Everyone yeah. knows who Superman is. I'm good. Yeah, I'll just hire writers and they'll just figure it out. Yeah. And I'll give them no editorial control so that they can just be free. 
but McDuffie himself was a genius and knew what he was doing. And uh, in fact, he was a, uh, a physicist. Um, and oh yeah, yeah, and got <laughs> it. <laughs> Ding! Oh. <laughs> he got out. Uh, and this is from mutual friends of his. But the story goes that he got out of that and went to Tisch uh, because he had heard as an undergraduate that his work was being used on missile guidance systems against his knowledge. Really? Yeah. And being wholly offended by that work, mm -hmm. uh, he left. Like, he was pretty much disenfranchised with the entire department and pursuit yeah. and went into uh, filmmaking, okay. Alfred Tisch. Um, if you think that sounds familiar... I do. <laughs> I reminds, very much do. It reminds a few of us of the origins of John Henry Irons, uh, Steel from the Superman books, who was a tall, educated <laughs> black guy who looked a lot like Dwayne McDuffie. <laughs> interesting. That is yeah. interesting. That's, That's cool. cool. He's a real life superhero. Yeah. yeah. But used his intelligence and his like experience to kind of like in, into another category. Yeah. Now really? I want to know what field of physics he worked in. That Me too. Was used in the in the guidance yeah. system. I don't recall. It is really cool, though, that, like, there aren't a whole lot of individuals who have a scientific and a creative mind. Yes. You know what I mean? You tend yeah. to skew one way or the one other. Way or the other. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. While they were developing the Dakotaverse, somebody had the bright idea of being like, you have all these really, like, big, interesting characters. Hardwire is basically like a Batman slash Iron Man type character. Mm -hmm. Icon was their Superman. Mm -hmm. And they were like, there are three basic archetypes in comic books. Yeah. Batman, Superman... And Spider-Man. Right. Like, and the kid. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I believe that there is now room for a female archetype. Yeah. But I think that, like, that lacks nuance well, and depth. Well, like, I, I took... And the girl. I, <laughs> yes. I took that as, like, automatically I, I filled it in as, like, you know, you've got, like, the, like, super-powered, like, night indestructible individual. Yes. Yeah. The man who compensates for not having powers via... His brain. His brain, technology, training, whatever. Yep. And the kid. That could all be... It could be... It it's gender-neutral. It, it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Yeah. Uh, agreed. Yeah. Um, but Spider-Man was the one thing they were missing, and so uh, McDuffie whipped up Static. Uh, okay. And the show's called Static Shock, but he started out as Static. And, of course... Later on in Static's development throughout uh, the comic book industry, uh, his name would change to Static Shock. Gotcha. Uh, but Static was essentially their, their, their try at Spider-Man. Okay. Uh, a teenage superhero who gets powers accidentally and just wants to do the right thing. And he's a, he's a nerd and, you know, he mm -hmm. has his girl trouble. He's, he's the character through which we view, you know, the Dakotaverse from a, a naive perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Arguably, Static was the one character to survive from the Dakotaverse. Mm. It was certainly the only book that they made after the closing of Milestone, mm -hmm. and it's the only one that got a cartoon show. Mm -hmm. But Icon did end up appearing in other media. He showed up in DC books, but he also showed up in the Justice League spin-off cartoon, uh, Young Justice. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really know the other two characters very well, but yeah. like uh, with Static, it's like there's something like... That type of archetype, yes. there's something really endearing about it. Agreed. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. as you get it into like it. It has, like, a broad appeal, like, being, like, you know, thinking of, like, a young individual who comes into powers and mm -hmm. then has to deal. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Oh, it's just, it's every, well, it's, there's a reason why Spider-Man is one of the most recognizable superheroes on the planet. Yeah. It's yeah. because most people enjoy him. Right. Yeah. And his experience, and can picture themselves in some part. Yeah, it's kind of like a wish issues. fulfillment sort of thing. Agreed. But if you're an adult, it, you have like nostalgic memories for mm -hmm. like that period in your life exactly. as well. So you can still enjoy it. So yeah. it kinda, can appeal to anybody. Icon was interesting because Icon was an alien, mm. like Superman, uh -huh. who crashed okay. land on Earth okay. during the Civil War times. Oh. And, the, oh. the, and his ship scanned the nearest indigenous life form who was a black slave... And so it took on the form of that person. Oh. And so Icon grew up as a slave and as a black man in America. Huh. And grew up that way. And just kept creating personas who were the offspring of the one he was in the previous generation. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's like, that's like a Superman, Martian, Manhunter yes. kind of like... like I, I dig that. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, in fact, he didn't even become a superhero until after he met... 
his young female sidekick who encouraged him to use his powers for heroics. Wow. Um, oh, okay. She was like, oh, you have powers and you're black? You could actually do some good. And he's like, oh. <laughs> that's, that's cool. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And the whole book is actually told from her perspective. Like, it's about him. Uh, but then, of course, by like issue 25 or whatever, like he leaves and he's like, you were Icon the whole time. And it's like, oh, that's sweet. Cool idea, cool universe, getting into Static. Yeah, yeah. Static, the character, is named after the James Brown song, Static. I don't think I know that one. Yeah, I don't, I didn't know it well. I'd heard it before, but I, you know, but it wasn't on my, uh, it was on my playlist. Uh, yeah. I, I was going to say, but I'm also not really a... Uh, James Brown fan? No, I was going to say uh, a, a, a really, like, good feel for if people would know that song because I never know the names of songs. That's true. So I'm just like... <laughs> but I will say, <laughs> in the song, there's a line that you've heard a thousand times called, Don't start none, won't get none. Yeah. And that was there kind of like, with great power comes great responsibility for Static. Okay. Okay. So Static, a.k.a. Virgil Ovid Hawkins, is a 15-year-old who lives in Dakota, and he has a sister and a mom and a dad, and he goes to school, and he has a bunch of friends. And when you pick up the first issue of Static, he's already Static. Okay. And just boom. Is this the, is this the beginning, or is this some point? This trade we have here is... The beginning, it's like the first couple of issues of Static. Okay. And then they they had another generation called Rebirth of the Cool, which of course is a play on the Miles Davis album. It's not a continuation. It's not a straight shot. Okay. There's, there was stuff there's in a, between. There's stuff in between. It's a big train. break. It's a real jarring experience reading okay. this book. Okay. Because like Static starts out and he begins and then you keep reading it and he quit being Static, had been on a team already... And needed to come back. Okay. And like, you're just thrown about another dozen characters that are not organically introduced in the okay. beginning of the book. Okay. This this particular trade not only is out of print, but also is not the best way to introduce yourself to Static. <laughs> sure. Uh, thankfully, uh, you can get it online. Good. Okay. So, but it, but it, is, it is notoriously out of print. So it's hard to get. Gotcha. Which is why, in the description below this video, instead of a copy of Static, I'm linking you to a GoFundMe for the Dwayne McDuffie Foundation. So if you want to spend some money, you can do it for the... Uh, oh, I like that. Yeah. Uh, and it's for, it's for people who embody the spirit of Dwayne McDuffie and, and you know, young students who are looking to move That's on really to, cool. to the world of the arts. So check it out. Virgil is... I love Virgil. Okay. It's, <laughs> the thing about Static is that it's basically Ultimate Spider-Man. Like... Okay. A good... What, 93? Seven years before Ultimate Spider-Man. Um, Virgil is... Quick-witted and a jokester. He's friendly and approachable. He's like really annoying, <laughs> but in the, the best way. Okay. You know, like he'll he he's that he's that kid you knew in school who, if you were friends with him and you came and he'd be like, "There is my friend. Come, like hail, hail the conquering hero who bested the <laughs> sleeping dragon of, of 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 tardiness to join me." And then you're like, "Oh my god." <laughs> Okay, That's Virgil. Shut up. Okay. And so Virgil has no chill when it comes to <laughs> his personality at school versus as stat. It's just the same person, but with an outfit. Okay. Okay. Um, and that outfit is a jumpsuit, which is different than what I from the cartoon. From the cartoon, which yes. is the image on the cover. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. It's a very <laughs> different outfit. Which I, right. I see why they did that because they were like, "Hi." You'll know him from the cartoon. Hi, cartoon watcher. Would you like to read about Static? Yeah, uh, he, won't, he won't look like that until like the next generation of his books. I well, yeah. I, I, that, when you said there was a next generation, I was like, I bet that's when yeah. they transitioned to that. I loved that outfit. Yeah, because I loved that coat. The coat's I was like, great. That's so cool. That that's cool giving thing. him like the cape, but without doing like the like. Overly yeah. done cape. Yeah, the 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 origin of the outfit is um, he had worn the the leotard mm -hmm. forever, mm -hmm. and then he threw it away. But his best friend Frida, who he is desperately in love with, but they're only friends, right? Mm. And she he, knows his identity. He's in the friend zone. <laughs> 
the thing is, <laughs> his relationship with Frida is, 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 is Frida is complicated. It's complicated. Because Does it say that on Facebook or uh, Facebook wasn't invented yet. <laughs> would it say that on Facebook if it had been invented? Virgil's would. <laughs> Not hers. And Frida's would be like, um, could you change that? <laughs> but no, uh, they're best friends. They're like really, really close. They talk to each other all the time. Like everyone is like, you two, what the hell? Yeah. Right. Um, but Virgil also has made a point of like kind of keeping their relationship kind of platonic, though he always jokes around about them maybe getting together and she does nothing to refute it. Okay. So clearly she is into him. So he put himself in the friend zone. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, though it's not hard with a personality like Virgil's, who is a huge dork. It's... I love Virgil. Virgil is me in high school. <laughs> and, you know, my dating life was a little sparse. Like Virgil's. Although Virgil does wind up dating multiple people. Okay. None of whom are Frida. Right. Throughout his career. Okay. Throughout the lifespan of Milestone Comics. Right. Okay. Which was... 93 to, like, 97. Okay. Um, not they, a bad run? No, nah, no. No, not a bad run. A pretty typical run, right? For yeah. comic well, book it's, publishers it's, around that right, time? Right, new publishers? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, the new publishers around that time were, like, Valiant and Image. Yeah. Well, the, don't forget Topps Comics. Oh, yeah. Yes, the trading card company. Yes. Hey, here's another connection to Static for that. Uh, when they launched Milestone Comics, DC had a relationship with Skybox Comics, and they released a trading card collection featuring the Milestone characters alongside the DC catalog okay. as a way of like kind of getting the word out oh, about cool. these characters. Yeah. It was another good reason to get into a publishing relationship with DC. Mm -hmm. right. That relationship would of course uh, get very sour yes. later on. Mm. Uh, though it, though it, it's interesting. So one thing at a time. So, sure. so Frida saves the suit from the garbage and cleans it and offers it to Virgil because after Virgil quits because he sees a hero go into a burning building and then doesn't do anything to save her. He tries to warn her, but she ends up dying. Oh. And so he quits. Uh, so Frida is like, you gotta be a superhero, come on. That's like the best thing about you. Like, go like, <laughs> knock it off. And he's like, no. And he's pretty emphatic about it. But circumstances dictate that he must get back in the saddle. Right. Uh, he is actually clothing shopping with his family and like the mall is attacked by bad guys who are looking to lure Static out. Actually, they're collecting uh, characters from similar origins to Static, and Static has to hastily put together an outfit to obscure his identity, mm -hmm. and that is the costume from the cartoon show. Okay. That's, okay. that's fun. And he's like, I need a coat. I, where's my... And he gets the coat, and then... And, and he keeps that coat. Uh, he actually gets the whole thing, the head sock, the, the shirt with the logo that would be the Static logo, and, yeah. uh, and, and the coat and everything. But that coat survives. I love that coat. I know, I like it too. And somebody makes a point about, like, saying, like, a coat yeah. is, your, is your outfit? <laughs> But it's like, it's yeah. Like a costume. Yo, what, is it any different than like a big rectangle or trapezoid on your back? Like, <laughs> Yes. I, yeah. A coat is functional. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's is, 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 is purely decorative. Yeah. What yeah. is your decorative aspect? Yeah. The mask. The mask is the decorative uh, aspect. The goggles is part of the mask, right. I think, or the, is the decorative part. So that's the origins of the suit. Thank which you. wouldn't happen until the next part, the next right. phase of the book. Yeah, but that's uh, happened yet. Yeah. Actually, I, pref I prefer the suit. You like do. The, the, because he I think like it's a because I saw the other one first. Oh, he's and like, like I yeah. what I liked about that was that like I felt like that was more approachable. Yeah. Like, no, I I agree. There's mm. something about that like that anyone can be can, can right. just throw on an outfit. But it also and be like makes him more youthful. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like there's something about yeah, like, like who made his costume? Yeah, like you're learning with him. I don't know. Like mm -hmm. I really liked that element. Agreed. Of it. Yeah. So uh just Static is on the scene and he's kicking ass. Uh, there's some jerks who are causing a ruckus at the arcade. It's mm. 93. And uh, <laughs> so he uses his Static-based powers and basically he can, he can control electromagnetic fields. And, like, and he can actually absorb uh, electricity and use it to augment his strength and power. Um, okay. He's not, but he does have like a like a limit. Like on, a threshold. Like a threshold to his power. Unlike like Black Lightning who could pretty much just like burn the earth. <laughs> Like, there's no oh, upper limit on yeah, his power. Uh, so, so he can shoot lightning. He can shoot lightning, yeah. And I guess absorb lightning. Yep. And can, he, uh, can he resist damage? Yes, he can. Okay. Yeah, and uh, he can also use metal objects to ride. Yeah. Oh, that uh, explains this. His, his preferred mode of transportation is a garbage can lid, which was another thing yeah. carry over into the cartoon. Okay. 
I love that. That's yeah. cool. I like that too. Uh, he uses it like to just to fly around. Later on when he retires, he uses it to ride his bike for him. So he just like he just leans on the bike and the bike just rolls for him. <laughs> nice. Because he's a lazy teenager. Right. That's yeah, okay. I would do that with that power. Right? The gang leader is named Biz Money, who is just a big douchebag. Sure. Who controls a with, gang. With a name like that. I agree. They they were harassing Frida. Okay. And so uh, you know. What well, well were they like uh, yes, they they were like they were going to be violent with her. No, they were. It's they were it's, just it's being It's a little jerks. more real, like it, okay. You know, unlike uh, in like a, a '90s Superman book where like roving gangs just go and like just to get you, right? You know the way that like PSA ads would tell you gangs are gonna do, right? Just, we're coming for you, yeah. And then we'll just abscond, and who knows what's gonna happen, right? These are just like it's a bunch of jerks who are armed, who uh. go to places where people of their age and demographic congregate and they declare that they're in charge of that area. Right. And if there's like a pretty girl there, they pronounce that she is now part of the gang. Right, you're coming and, with uh, us. Yeah, unless she uh, resists, she will meet violence. Right. So, uh, you know. So they, they haven't gotten to the point of, well, they're, they're just starting to grab her. Yeah. Because she's saying she's not going to go with them. Right. And then Static shows And Frida's up. a fun character because she's like really headstrong and really like, she has a really strong personality. Mm. So she's just like, I'm not going. Like, no. Mm -hmm. But not in like a, like a, I won't, I have it. Yeah. Right. She just throws a little bit of quick-wittedness at them. Yeah. Which like annoys them. Sure. Uh, so. They are the five alarm crew, it looks like. Yeah, and it's, it's heat-based because biz money will develop powers uh. and become hot streak. Yeah, they say Hot Streak wants wants to meet you. Yeah, you're and going for a ride. By this point, Biz Money has become Hot Streak. Okay. He's like that name was ridiculous. Yes. Now yeah. Hot, no. Streak. hot Biz Streak. <laughs> yeah. One is more ridiculous than the other. I'll let you be the judge. <laughs> <laughs> the opening of Static is a flash forward. Oh, okay. And then we go back. And then we have to go back. Right. Okay. And in fact, we don't really go back. It's more that. Frida asks Static how he got his powers. Oh, uh, okay. And then eventually he tells her. Right. And that's when we get the rest of the book. Uh, okay. But it's all part of a flashback. Yeah. Um, so Static rescues Frida from the Five Alarm Gang. Mm -hmm. And uh, then he counts the seconds that it takes for Frida to get back to her house from the arcade mm -hmm. so that he can be in his room ready for Frida to call him to tell him how awesome he is at rescuing her. Okay. And as he <laughs> counts the seconds, he goes into his house and he runs into his annoying sister and his mom and they're all like roadblocks. Right. And, you know, he, he throws some like fun wit at them to annoy them into submission and get out of his way. Right. And while he's, keeping, he's keeping the clock going. Yeah. Gets in his room, boom, the phone rings, he picks it up and he answers it in a classic uh, Virgil-esque manner. That's and, uh, and, you know, and, and just, you know, she goes... She says, hello, Frida. <laughs> and she goes, why mm -hmm. you keep doing this? <laughs> uh, so, you know, she, he does his whole shtick at her. And she's like, will you shut up or you're never going to hear about how Static saved my life? And he's like, what? Static? Static. I hear he's freaking dope. Uh, <laughs> she's like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> like, all right. Dial it back. Because she doesn't know he's Static. Okay. Right. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. Okay. No, and she will. Okay. Of course. Yes. Because like every teenager who has superpowers in any fictitious universe, uh, it's unrealistic when they don't tell you. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's... Yeah. Status update. <laughs> <laughs> I have friggin' superpowers. Don't mess with me anymore. Also, ladies, my number is this number. <laughs> I have friggin' superpowers. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it on the DL. They're doing their, their little like introduction. Because that's the thing is that McDuffie's like, you got to meet the cast of characters. Right, Here So they are. he introduced you to Virgil's family as Virgil like runs through the room trying to accomplish a goal. Right. So you're not focused on meeting the characters. The character, like Virgil doesn't go, ladies and gentlemen, my mother and my sister and my dad is at work. And like names all of them in an inorganic fashion. He does name them though. So mm -hmm. you know who they are or they name themselves. Right. But like in a, in a way that you get. You know, mm -hmm. that you're like, that you're focused on one thing, but passively learning at the same time. Right. right. So uh, then we run into the rest of the Five Alarm Gang. They're, they show up at school. Mm. So they are continual antagonists. In the, for this arc. For this arc, okay. Yeah. yeah. Static will teach them a thing or two. Sure, of course. So Static and his friends go to class, and while they're in class, 
the five alarm gang just walks in and goes like, hey, uh, Frida, you're supposed to be coming with us. Our, our <laughs> guy wants... And it's like, the teacher's like, um... <laughs> right. And then they just brandish a gun and they're like, shut up. Wow. We're in the middle of something here. Oh my God. Which is like frightening yeah and like something you'd never see in a mainstream comic no. much less dc comics but uh but yeah and i, I was just like i remember reading and being like Whoo! like <laughs> you can't do that <laughs> and it's like yeah that's exactly yeah. The, the conceit you get in big trouble yeah <laughs> well no i mean like you can't do that in comics oh in comics yeah it's like yeah that's right yeah you can't yeah but you can't but like but it is kind of like that's yeah they're 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 harassing frida and Larry's like, okay, I think we can, I think we can take him. What we'll need to do is, I'm go- like, you do your standard annoying theatrical thing that'll distract them, and I'll. And then he turns, and like the window's open, and Virgil's gone. He's like, Virgil, goddamn it, man! Jumped out the window, man! Like, you pathetic dork. Uh, Virgil changes into a static costume, yep. and then uh, and then and then goes to uh, to meet with Hot Streak. Hot Streak, yeah. So they just take her. Yeah, yeah, they take her away. Oh yeah. Well, they had a gun, so like. Right. What are you gonna do? Yeah. It's 93, yeah, there's they just, no... They just grab her and... And they leave. And Larry's yeah. entire plan was... Well, Virgil, Virgil was key. Yeah. <laughs> he was instrumental. We need the distraction Without element. that distraction, I, I can't do anything. Well, the gang members mentioned that, like, that if anyone involves themselves in this in this interaction, we will we'll shoot them. Right. right. It's like, yeah. Without backup, I would... I would oh, no, I, that's fair. Yeah. That's like, totally fair. I mean, the fact is, you know, if Virgil weren't super-powered, it's already a bogus plan. Yeah. Mm. Excuse me, gentlemen. Blam! Like... <laughs> So, I'm, I'm I'm betting they're cowards. Yeah, and hopefully they wouldn't have. Yeah, let's let me bank on that. The, the reason they have the gun is because they're cowardly. We see that Biz Money is now hot streak. Right. And he is very fast and yeah. can generate like fire. Fire. Yeah. And he just he wants Frida because f- she's she's hot. Yeah. What is his deal with Frida? Or is there more to it? Does she know someone? Earlier. Or? Well, in the flashback, you'll find that ah. Biz Money hit on her earlier, and she re- she rebuffed him. She was him. like, "No." And he's like, "No, no, no." But I told you, you're one of my, you're mine. Right. Ah. He, he won't me. let it go. He's still right. a douchey teenager. Right. Because now, he's but powers. now he's got powers. Yeah, so and he already like, had a gang, so you right. already had like delusions of grandeur. Right. Okay. Uh, so he's you know he's in, and his base of operations is the local playground. Like he's just set up. What on a, a, a yep. stand-up guy. Yep. Uh, so. Yep, and he's smoking. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's the kind of stuff you'd never see in a mainstream comic. Yeah. Free to flip them off, and there's no like convenient cloud and blocking it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> nope, she just doesn't. I so, like her. <laughs> yeah. So Static shows up, and uh, so he he engages Hot Streak, and when he realizes who Hot Streak is, he completely folds. And then gets the shit kicked out of him. What? What? I guess he's not used to fighting people with powers? No. No, Mm. it's... He's afraid of Biz Money. Because he has... Because Biz Money kicked the shit out of him before he had powers. Oh. So he's like... Oh, so he has like a flashback almost. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's also just like, he has anxiety from that experience. Wow. Okay. He's like, oh my god, this guy kicked my ass before. Now he has powers. He's gonna kick my ass even more. But you have powers. But I forgot about that because I'm just a kid. Right. Not that I forgot I have powers, but I forgot that that matters. Right. Or that I might be more clever than he is with my powers. Gotcha. Do his hands turn into like flaming balls? Yeah. And he throws happening? waffles. Yeah, he's throwing. Because that's literally what it looks like from over here. I think they're they're coins. They look like coins. Ah! He throws fire coins. He can. Well, he he just he grabs a handful of change because he goes to the arcade. Oh. And he like heats them up. Heats them into, up. Like, molten oh, discs of of, of, of of you know. Like yeah. gambit. Yeah. yeah, like gambit. <laughs> yeah, kind of like gambit. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Cool. But yeah, so static gets so static gets his ass kicked when he realizes that it's biz money. Right. Uh, because Static gets the upper hand in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, he's kicking his ass, and then he's like, yeah, "Don't let this look at that the beard this guy has." Static, don't don't let this guy beat you yeah, up. Yeah, you can't let this no, douche this beard guy sucks. beat you. When I was a freshman, I had that exact beard. That sucks. What? I agree. You, pointy. Well, what? It didn't get that long. Oh, okay. Like, and, and, and it was, it was like, only here. That's all. It could, that's where it could grow. Yeah. Now it's yeah. You know, back then, that's all. No, I could that grow. guy. No. Listen. Static's gonna get. Static's gonna beat this guy up. Eventually, a young lady was kind enough to shave it off for me. <laughs> right? and it wasn't very long hmm. that it existed, but uh, so Static gets his ass kicked, and then they leave, 
And Frida just watches it all happen. He's like, and don't you forget that you're mine. And then they all leave. So Frida picks up Static and he's all like bruised and beaten. And he's just, he's just like cowering before her. And she gets the mask off and she's like, Virgil? So then she basically like brings him back to her place. And oh. I know. Oh. Yeah. No, nothing occurs. Yeah. Uh, but she kind of nurses him back to health. And he's just like, ah, I can't believe that. I, I can't beat that guy. And she's like, why don't you tell me where your powers came from? And he's like, okay, remember that time that those guys gave you a hard time? Like that Biz Money attacked you? Mm-hmm. Well, like that's the day I got my powers. So Biz Money like went up to her and like asked her out or you know, his equivalent and, uh, <laughs> and she rejected him and then he got really like aggressive and then Virgil used his Virgil. It's like, excuse me, sir. Uh, are you familiar with the concept of like non-reciprocity? Like, <laughs> and, and, and he just beats the shit out of Virgil. Yeah, oh. he slams his head into a locker. Mm-hmm. Wow, sh- that guy did not used to have that goatee. No, no he, he, he grew decided it. to grow it. Yeah, when he got the firepower. Yeah, he's he like, like, okay, I on. earned this. I need now a- I'm serious. Yep. Well, now I'm a grown up. I got my grown up powers, yep. and I'm going to get my grown up goatee. So Biz Money is going to put more hurt on Virgil when Larry shows up, and he's like, hey, man, you got a problem? And Biz Money's like, bye. <laughs> Don't you forget, I'm a badass. And Larry's <laughs> like, listen, man, you need to establish that you don't take that kind of shit. Because if you let that happen, everyone's gonna be coming for you. Mm. So what you need to do is you need to take a gun and you need to kill that guy. And he's like, okay. What? So, okay. So la- what? Yeah. So Virgil meets with Larry later. Larry gives him a gun. Where did he get it from? We don't, uh, we don't, ex- we don't answer that question. Wow. So Larry's like, well, we know the biz, like Biz Money is meeting. There's like a congregation of gangs that are meeting up at like this park, and so Virgil needs to go to the park and shoot him. So Virgil goes to the park, and he's got his gun, and he points it at Biz Money, and he can't do it. And he's like, I'm not a killer, and he goes to like the like the water nearby. He just throws it in there. What Virgil did not count on was that the congregation of gangs that was taking place at the park was part their idea, but also it was known about by the local authorities. Oh. Oh. And the local authorities... So, okay, uh, McDuffie and and crew are talking about how, like, where where do these powers come from that everybody's got? Uh, Well, in 1985... There was an organization, there still is, it's called MOVE. Kind of like gained a foothold in like a residential area in Philadelphia. Okay. It's the real world. Yes. Okay. (laughs) And the Philadelphia Police Department knew that the organization of MOVE had set up in this like kind of like residential neighborhood. And so they quietly moved out people from the surrounding areas and moved in with heavy artillery. Oh. And... uh, Unbeknownst to them, Move had built a like special kind of like turret on the top of the house that allowed them to have a vantage point and a sniping position against the local authorities. So the authorities were like, this is an issue. So they dropped a bomb on that neighborhood and blew up the entire surrounding area. Well, just the building, but it's a apartment building in the middle of Philadelphia, so surrounding buildings all caught fire as well, and like over 11 people died, including five children. Oh my gosh. I believe that the bomb had been laced with some kind of chemical as well, which is where McDuffie and crew got the idea for what what would be in the Dakotaverse, the Big Bang, which was that the local authorities drop a tear gas bomb mm. on this gang. The idea being that it would incapacitate them, but it was laced with a radioactive uh, like isotope okay. that would mark them. Oh. So that if they scattered, they could, we could find them with later. With like a radioactive scanner thing. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. That's... A pretty good, that's a pretty good idea. Yeah, if, well, they, if you're a militarized force. Well, I mean, force, it's, it's a pretty good idea for a writer to have. Yes, uh, yes. Because that's like a real, okay, I can, guys, physicists, you would have yeah. thought of that. Because they do that like in your body. They'll put radioactive markers in yeah, things yeah. so they can track it in your body. Exactly. And stuff. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, what the Dakota Police Department didn't know was that the bomb that they dropped 
was actually the machinations of another character who did it and laced it with Q juice, which is short for quantum. Oh. It's the word I know you like oh, great. using just oh, no. arbitrarily. But uh, it was laced with quantum juice, which would be the basis for the powers that would be imbued in a percentage of the gang members that were hit by the bomb and Virgil. Like a Terrigen bomb? Kind of. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. like, like they literally, like, Marvel was just like, that seemed like it was a good mm. idea. Why don't we Come just on, do that over on. Like, Done! Wow. So um, they, okay. Terrigen cloud, I guess. Yeah. Cloud, whatever. yeah. No, it was, it was a Terrigen bomb. It was, you're right. That's yeah. right, And then yeah. the cloud And then the cloud, the cloud floated, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, wow. So they're trying to create... They're using the people as experiments. Yes. Okay. Well, the the the, the shadow organization, the shadow organization uh, yeah. was like, we need a new generation of, 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 of superpowered beings in order to usher humanity into the next step. Why don't they just kidnap people right. and use it on them? Well, because some other some other character's um, doing that too. That's cliche. Yeah. Right. No, we'll <laughs> sneak it into another thing actually, and make it random. They, yeah. Right. Uh. Well, because it was random for us when we were first yeah. created. Well, we're, we're not gassing people. We're right. not dropping the bomb on people. It's not yeah. really our fault. So a certain number of people in the in this gang congregation of like tons of people, uh, most of them died. Right. But the ones who didn't got powers, and anyone who was like born the from that, bomb. yes. So anyone who was born from that were called Bang Babies because this was considered to be the Big Bang of superpowers, and Static gets his powers from that. Oh, okay. Interesting. So. Are the police at all upset about the fact that, like, this didn't work the way they wanted it? Like, clearly they did For them, they were like, I mean, half of them are dead. That worked out. Well, they also, they they're, also they're, get they're upset, gang though, because they're like, it's yeah. eating through our masks. <laughs> they didn't know. Yeah. It's pretty horrible. What's up in that upper right-hand panel up there? Oh, There's well, some after, that, after that had cleared, like, the cleanup crew shows up of, you know, another... The bad guys. organization. Yeah. Yeah. That's like sweeping to see who got their power. Yeah, all right. Where's the power people? Let's uh -huh. go pick them up. Yeah. So Virgil okay. runs away and uh, and defends himself by accidentally using his powers. Yep. And manages to get out get out of there. Okay. All right, well, let's go and uh, sweep up those uh, those new powered people. Oh no, they're using their powers. <laughs> who could have ever seen this? <laughs> so Virgil gets his powers in the Big Bang. And uh, and, and and then and then immediately cool. learns how to use it because he's a good student, and he's like, okay, if I can control mm. the electromagnetic field. But he's also he a like nerd. He thinks about it, yeah. yeah. So like, he's like, oh! And he's he's like, like, magic missiles, here we right. go. And, he, and he's like, superhero, that's, who, that's what I'm going to be now. Right. I'm so in. And so that's, that's it. And so he becomes static. And he's like, so anyway, that Frida, that's the story. <laughs> And he's like, listen, uh, is this, uh, you know, is this, uh, is this doing anything? That's like also like a right. cool like <laughs> origin story, because he was like, he went there to like, do wrong to do wrong on his own decided not to still witness something horrific yes. you know what i mean so out of it like yeah he's like okay yeah, he's a guiltless peter parker yeah but uh I, I also love it because like it unapologetically like virgil you know in any other book in any other universe virgil would have been like a gun kill him no way jose say no yeah. to drugs and <laughs> guns no, but like he, he Virgil's he an impressionable young kid. Right, and he also lives in a very different universe than a lot of the other heroes that yeah, are yeah, created. Yeah. So like And a very well, different got, world than like he's standard got everyone comic book readers him are used to. Yeah. Telling him that he needs to like stand up for himself and be strong yeah, right. these people will take advantage of and him. A, a, Even a, like a his strong mom. person who stands up for himself all the time is giving you guidance. Yeah. You'll see this later, he's gonna run into another character who's super powered named Holocaust. Uh, very foreboding name. Yikes. And uh, he's a badass and he's got like crazy powers. He's also a dipshit. But like, uh, Holocaust runs like a whole organization that's built off of his powers. Uh -huh. Not like an organization the way that like uh, Ozymandias runs an organization, but more <laughs> like a like a, like a a very well-organized gang crime kind of situation. Okay. Uh, so, but, but uh, Holocaust kind of, because he's part of the Blood Syndicate, which is like the young blood or, you know, Justice League or whatever you want to call it of mm -hmm. the Dakotaverse, uh, he is trying to like recruit Static and impart wisdom, and so he gives him like all these different like nuggets of of wisdom or at least what Virgil thinks is wisdom at the time, mm -hmm. you know, and and you know it's all very like self oriented, you know, like get, you get yours kind of kind of uh, lessons, and those those lessons are like playing over and over in his head, and when Virgil runs into other influences in his life like his mom or Frida. Uh, when they start to say the same shit that they always say that makes him vulnerable or puts him in another position, 
they do this amazing like lettering thing where they superimpose the caption box of what Holocaust said over the speech bubble that they're actually saying that's like Virgil's translation of what they're saying that's just feeding into what Holocaust was saying he needs to avoid. Oh. You know, so it's like, you're just saying the same, you're saying the same, same shit that Holocaust told me to avoid. Mm. You know, that's, so he misses a lot of things that they're saying to him because he's like, oh, this is all noise that Holocaust told me. Right, 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 to. right. So he's impressionable. Yeah. Uh, okay. By the way, Holocaust wants to put out a hit on somebody and kill his family. Uh, unbeknownst to, to Static in that story, this is the end of this thing, but like, uh, they go to like make a, you know, to, to, to impress uh, upon them, you know, that Holocaust is not one to be trifled with. And so uh, they, they wreck the place and he's like, okay, well, I'm not going to kill your, your daughter. You don't care about girls. I'm not going to kill your wife because you get another one. But your son, you know, sons are always kind of a problem for people like me. And so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and kill him. And Stag's like, you're not killing anybody. And like completely 180s on... On, on Holocaust, yeah. and he doesn't even know he's going to do it until he sees, and he's he's given a moment of morality, yeah. to choose, and so he chooses, you know. He also kind of has the coat in this too. Sorry. Yeah, he does. He puts on the coat. He does put on a coat. Yeah, yeah. but it's, it's not. Coat. It's yeah. It's but coat, we do. Yeah. We do establish like he's he, he does the coat thing. Yeah. Cool. So anyway, that that's later. That's just okay. he is impressionable. Yeah, and it's which like, is fair. He's well, and like he needs to keep like learning these lessons. It's not yeah. like I learned yeah. with great power comes great responsibility. I will never need to be taught that again. I'll never be taught to anything again. That's all right. I need. Yep, that's one lesson. I'll just keep well, using will say, that over and he over. He does. Uh, Peter Parker to defend him a little bit. He learns that again. Or learns a deeper message when Gwen Stacy dies. Yeah. I don't think he really learns it. Like it's not like in with Uncle Ben where he's like, I got a bumper sticker s quote I can right. just tattoo on my more face. Complex. With with his it's like great power isn't enough. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, okay, you that's You're not all powerful. <laughs> well, I should be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, anyway, so so static uh, Another interesting thing about the Big Bang. About this no, about um this this part of the book yeah. is Frida keeps telling him, like, she she's saying that she admires him because he's not a fighter. Right. Like he he he, he fights with his brain. Yeah. yeah. He uses words. He defeats yeah, he situations. He doesn't have like that this macho attitude where it's like I got to get the upper hand on these guys. Yeah. Yeah. And he's not getting it. No. He's like, no, no I I got to be tough and yeah. I got to be like like Larry. Because she's saying, like, no, like, you you beat him already because you walked away from that fight. Yes. And he's like, no, no, I got to go get him. Yeah. Uh, so he's not, yeah. you know, she's she's telling him that, like, she likes him the way he is. Right. He's like, no, 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 I this gotta. is This is the way you're going to get me to sleep with you. <laughs> and he's nope, like, I gotta nope, go punch nope. Him. I know how to get you to sleep with me. Trust me. <laughs> Virgil is listening a little bit because when he goes back to face the hot streak again, uh-huh. he realizes like you did that the power is in his hands mm. and so he he just shows up and immediately immobilizes his hands <laughs> okay and then wraps him up and he's like gotcha yeah nice cool you can't trick me anymore <laughs> is, it, is it too soon to start quoting far from home so he beats hot streak uh -huh. and then immediately goes to frida's place and he's like i did it like i beat him she's like way to go and he's like how about some sugar, baby? And she's like, get away. Like, and he's like, no. oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, okay. Okay. What What am I seeing there? Yeah, what's happening? This is another character that was invented in the Big Bang. It's another new villain. Uh, uh, it's kind of a villain of the week thing. It lends itself very much to animation. But we mm -hmm. get a new character. He shows up in the next issue. It's literally the next fight. Okay. He says, if he's weak, take him. If he's strong, hire him. Oh, yeah. That's uh, Holocaust talking about. Oh, that was, uh, okay. So this guy's working for Holocaust. Yeah. Does this guy have two mouths? He's what? like. Thank he, you for asking that question because I was like, "That's what I'm seeing." He's like, he's like Sandman in that he can like make himself into stuff. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh we're talking about Tarmac, the bad guy that oh, has multiple oh, mouths for a second. I was gonna ask if he was Tar. Yeah, he's Sandman, but Tar. That's exactly what it is. Okay, so, but uh, because Tarmac is working for somebody, he's just he's just posturing. He just goes to places where you know Static has been and goes like, "Hey, is Static here? I want to fight him." Static, come on! I heard Static was here once. But like. <laughs> kind of a thing that people do yeah. where they're just like I'm calling you out come on right but it's also like we've seen that now too as like kind of like a tropey kind of thing like the idea of like henching yeah you know what mm. I mean or wanting like a villain wanting someone as like their arch nemesis like literally yeah, the Harley Quinn show yeah right now is dealing with that and That's like true. this came 
20 years earlier. Yeah, before. like, but, like, that concept of, like, if you're a villain, you want someone to yeah, fight. That's right. So, Static engages Tarmac, uh, you know, and he, he hits him with, like, a big beam. Tarmac's like, oh, God! He's like, oh, crap, I'm sorry. He's like, ah, I gotcha. And he, like, envelops uh, him. Uh. And then, like, he uses his powers just, like, to disperse him and then just, like, kicks his ass. It's a fun little element here where you have to turn the goddamn book to read this one panel because they wanted to fit it in the issue. Because uh, he's, cause he's uh, like, mid-air, so you're like, whoa! Okay. I like it because it, 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 for, it's... Like, where's the line between that horrible McFarlane's all sideways issue of Spider-Man mm. or the issue of Court of Owls where Wayne is going through the labyrinth and have you have to, to turn, turn the whole goddamn book? Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I think this is more the latter. <laughs> so, uh, Static, uh, you know, he, he immobilizes Tarmac and then has to go and rescue somebody from the collateral damage and then leaves. Okay. Uh, but he's essentially just constantly dealing with Tarmac and he's like, I need to come up with a better way to fight him. Like, I need to use my brain. Right. So he develops, like, a a way to, like, contain him. Gotcha. Cool. Nice. So what he does, and he, and he beats him and he, and he contains him. Is that guy holding a clown mask? With or a clown? Ah. Yeah, uh, what happens is Static... <laughs> agrees to meet with Tarmac, you know, and like, and fight him, and then he uses his electromagnetic powers to fill some clothes oh, to look oh, like oh, okay. him, so Tarmac will just blindly attack him, it, and oh. the person that he made was like an inflatable clown balloon. It looks like As a, I have to say, like, I'm clowning you. It looks like a clown melted. Yes. Yeah. Which is a horrifying uh, image. It's like one of those things that you punch and it comes back up. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Now, now I see that, yeah. but initially I was like... Yes. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Plus, like with the Joker, you're like, oh, it's like a Joker person. Like, yeah. Who's yeah. dissolved into. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just, it's, it, it's a toy that he uses to, to make fun of Tarmac. Yeah. But he's like, gotcha. Cool, yeah. And then he uses his advantage and of misdirection to beat him and then, like, you know, kick put his him ass. In a, put him in a container of some kind. Yeah. Well, first he pours liquid, ni liquid oxygen on him, oh. which freezes him. And then he runs over him with a steamroller. Oh, and geez. then Holocaust shows up and he's like, well done. Get in the limo. You passed the test. Yes. So, like, see, that for me, like, again, we're adults, but, like, that for me is, like, red flag number one. You yes. celebrated me, like, almost, like, destroying your... Your guy. Yeah, your dude. Yeah. yeah. So... Not yeah. cool. So Holocaust is like, I don't know if he was weak. You beat him and he's weak. Yeah. Now you, you can replace him. He's not a Sith Lord. <laughs> Here. He's just, it was a test. He works for me. You didn't oh. kill him. Great. I have two people in my he's employ. He's like, bzz. Yeah. yeah. So he's like, what do you want? And he goes, I want two things. I want you to drink with me and talk with me. How about that? So they get into like the limo and they leave and they go to. It's a nice limo. Yeah. It's like a room. Yeah. It's big. Yeah. It's wow. pimped out. It's like one of those SUV limos. Yeah. You can stand up in it. Right? Yeah. yeah. But uh, he basically, he's just he's explaining to him, like, you used brains to beat that guy. That's mm -hmm. what I need, is, is people with powers who can use them intelligently. Yeah, yeah. So he brings him to his lair, which is essentially just like, a, a, like the, the Foot Clan lair from Ninja <laughs> Turtles, where it's like just arcade machines and babes. Nice. Which was not what the Foot Clan was all there was, about. There were there zero, zero babes. <laughs> zero babes. There was which a is single like, babe chick. at that. I feel like if the Foot Clan had wanted to get more recruitment... Yeah. Yeah. They needed to been up the babe quota. Yeah. I agree. Maybe so, they wouldn't have been lost to the turtles if they'd used some babes. To right, well, they, well, they would have been like, okay, these guys have got something to fight for now. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. might get some when they get back. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If they get back. Yeah. They, they won't, but I no. will lead no. them to believe that no. they will Oh, might. naturally. So Static, uh, you know, he, 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 when he walks in, you know, he's like, have a taste. And the girls all like swarming, like, "Oh, you didn't tell me he was cute, yeah." And they really upping it up, yeah, like, you know, really, getting it. Yeah. And he's like, "Okay." And then they have a beer. Okay. Like they go to the bartender, who's also a cute lady, and she hands him a beer, mm -hmm. and he drinks it because it's like, because yeah, like yeah, not, I'm, an, I'm an adult, like because he's a 15 year old boy who's just been given a beer and he's trying to impress yeah. this guy, like yeah, like as opposed to nah, thanks, right? You know, no, like, I'm cool. And I'm not saying that like. He does adult things, ergo, this is a well-made book. No. It's more like, it's a realistic portrayal yeah. Yeah. of this. Like, later, Static will get into a serious relationship with a girl who is not Frida, <laughs> and she will heavily imply that she's down. Mm -hmm. And he talks to his parents about, like, when it's time. Like, when is it okay? And his dad is like, uh-oh. 
<laughs> well, I don't think you're ready, but here are condoms. Okay. Because right. I know you're not going to listen to me. <laughs> right, because you're a teenage boy. Yeah. Like, and he yeah. does have sex with her. Okay. Not, it's not like, and then 18 pages of graphic <laughs> sex. Like it's, it's. Well, no, he's a teenager, so yeah. we didn't even. They didn't even <laughs> say they sealed the deal. It's just like that they they are in a situation that suggests that it may occur at some point within the next 25 to 30 minutes yeah. of that story, and then we cut to the next day, and it's at school, not like that. He was putting his pants on, he's jumping out the window. <laughs> right, right. It's but just you like can infer that. Yeah, and it doesn't. It's not like it's a momentous moment that like he has to talk to everybody about. It's just like it, it's a thing that happens in this kid's life. Right, and right. And the, the cover implies more, or at least it did before DC was like, no, because it's like the cover of I believe issue twenty five was them making out on the couch, and there were condoms adjacent to them. Right, mm. which a it's, it's realistic, and yeah. but it's also it's like responsible. it's responsible. Yeah, uh, DC's but, like no. DC was like absolute un- emphatically no. <laughs> And uh, listen, Mc, this is McDuffie. a Batman banging Catwoman on a rooftop someplace. Yeah, right. Well, that would be right. twenty years later, but still, <laughs> like I will, I will uh, say, McDuffie believed that it wasn't because of the graphic nature in which they were engaged; that it was instead the fact that it was people of color who were engaged in mm. a like frank depiction of sexuality. It could have also been there were condoms there. It could be the condoms thing, but. Here's the yeah, deal. I guess the condoms would make someone think they're going to have sex as right. opposed to Oh, and they were making, making out, out like they were making yeah. out like a lot. They were yeah. the clothes weren't off, but like they were it was more than the standard kissing cover. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it became that because DC in one of their like few editorially like oppressive moves <laughs> allowed them to keep the cover so long as two thirds of it were black and it was just an iris of a heart around them kissing. See, that's when he says that that definitely is the condoms because the yeah. condoms made well, you make that leap. Yeah. Like, they were already making up too much. Yes. Then the condoms are there. You immediately, these, like, oh, these they're kids. Oh, they're about to have sex. These See, kids here, are going to have sex. Kids. Well, they, they could have they could have omitted the condoms. Yeah. But yeah. they yeah. Said, cut it even more. <laughs> they cut it so much so that there's not even, like, the hint of any well, action. And then, with, but, but by doing that, they could say, like, oh, no, no, we didn't change your art. We just cropped in on it. Yeah. Like, yeah. asking you to remove the condoms is, is altering the art. Yeah. Right. Work and what no, it was no, intended but to it's do. It's not about that. But the now condoms are still there. there. But the two-thirds of the art is gone. <laughs> but, but it's still technically <laughs> we, there. We, we're putting the focus on what we think is the strongest aspect. Which is the love. It. Which yeah. is still, love. like, total bullshit. But I could yeah. totally yes. imagine them in their head being like, this is how we're going to get away with it. I think it's a combination of factors because yeah. I think I think that DC was afraid oh, sure. of yeah. pissing off the wrong people. Oh, sure, yeah. sure. I mean, like that's a cowardly Always. move, but I think it also has something to do with the fact that like they're terrified of showing kids having sex. Yes. yes. Yeah, do you think the comics code, which was not engaged in this no. publishing line? Good. Yeah, because, they, well, the fact that she flipped people off, the fact that like there's no, but, teenagers don't underage drinking. Like, yeah. Well, and the fact that like they're, the comics code has never, ever, when they existed, <laughs> Given you a honest depiction of what the standards and practices are. Mm-hmm. Like, what is the metric you use to measure what is acceptable according to the comics code? They did not ever let you know. Like, what was. Because it was that's, nothing. Because they didn't that's have like the any rating system. They, yeah. they don't have rules either. Yeah, that's why you go to them and, like, appeal to them. That's like how them. we yep. make decisions on GBU. Yeah. It's, it's just whatever. arbitrary. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I think we have more integrity than either the Comics Code or the MPAA. But that being said, yeah. We do reserve the right to to make up our criteria. Indeed we do. It's just easier that way. This is our right and privilege. But we make the content. Yeah. Yes, it's yeah. our content. It's so our content to, to regulate as yeah. we see fit. Yeah, yeah. no, no, that's You're going to regulate total... other people, you should establish rules. Right. I'm glad the Comics Code had no hand in this. Me yeah. too. Yeah, they, they, wouldn't have been al- they wouldn't have been able to be as groundbreaking no. as they were. Mm. And even still, the, the damn thing closed four years later. But, Which is a shame. But it, but it, the, the impact was felt. Good. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, Holocaust, like, he gets, he gets in there. You know, he's yeah, in Static. Yeah. Static uh, leaves, he wants to go talk to Frida, he gets there and Larry's there. Oh. Uh-oh. Larry and Frida are hooking up now. Oh. oh, static, you didn't make your move. That's it. I mean, well, I no, guess he well, did no, he make tried, his move. He and did, she was just but like, like nah. kind of, you know. Like, yeah, he, well, he was, he didn't do a very good job. He did it right after he clearly misunderstood what she liked about him. Yes. Yeah. Also, he seemingly values their friendship. Right. Static catches them making out and then the experience Cause him to like lose control of his powers and he falls in the bushes. They go to see what's going on 
And Larry's like, dude, are you okay? And he's like, don't touch me. And he like, uses his oh. static powers to like, blast him across the, the Whoa. area. Uh, which Larry assumes is just, uh, Virgil's very strong. Mm. He's like, where'd that kid Oh, he doesn't know his own strength. Yeah, that's it. Oh. And he goes, he goes, I don't need your help. You almost made me kill someone. I need, I need nothing from you. Oh, all right. Okay. Nice. And so, also, like, that's a very realistic scene too, yeah. where he's just, he's just like, no, that's the girl. I'm like, you're not supposed to do that. Yeah. yeah. And I can imagine Larry's like, you literally never made a move. Like, yeah, no, he did, but like, Larry's like, Larry knows also that Virgil was interested. Oh no, yeah. that's not okay. Oh, yeah. I know. He broke the bro code. Yeah. That's not okay. But Larry goes to talk to him because, like, you know, Frida calls Virgil on the phone. He's like, oh, I'm sorry, but uh, the friend you have dialed is no longer available. Please hang up and find a new one. Click. Uh, oh. And because uh, he's getting well, and also more Holocausts like lessons are like petering in. Like right, you see right, the uh, right. like the lessons that he's heard, like when he's talking to people. Oh yeah. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Boom boom boom. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Oh, but the, the the lesson that he learns while he's at the arcade talking to his friends is that his friends knew that Larry and Frida were together. And they didn't tell and they didn't him. Tell him. Mm. And so he's like, Aww. oh, like, I don't, like, so it's pulling him further and further away from the Holocaust. Right. Uh, of course. Toward Holocaust. Yeah, yeah I'm into sorry. It's pulling arms. him further and further away from his, his, friends. his friends and his, and the world he knows into the Holocaust. World. Right. Yeah. Uh, of course, then we get the, the experience I described earlier where he, like, attacks the family and mm. Static defends them and rescues them. And uh, he leaves. And Holocaust thinks to himself that Virgil's a loser. It's mm. like, no, you're the You're loser. a loser. So... Static goes home, and when he is there, uh, he bumps into Larry, who's like, so yeah, maybe I try to talk you into Cap and B-Money. Biz Money, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I like B-Money. That's what we're calling him now. Yeah. But he, goes, he doesn't deserve a full name. He sucks. Yeah. And maybe <laughs> I should have told you that we were dating when you asked me for advice on how to ask her out. <laughs> but they were already dating at that point? Oh, oh Larry. Yeah. What a douche. Yeah. Being said, I've been in Larry's position. So uh, he's like, listen, you can be pissed at me, but don't be pissed at Frida. It's not, it's, she just wants to be friends with you. Right. You know? All right, well, whatever. And he leaves. And then Frida calls, and he's like, hey, all right. Right. Um, it's cute also because when he entertains the idea of Holocaust's offer, you know, Holocaust's going to pay him. Mm. And so uh, he had just, Virgil just lost his real job. Right. And pissed his mother off to no end. His mm. sister found out that uh, Virgil get, got fired, and so she immediately narks on him. Ugh. To mom. That, is, that is a, like, my understanding oh, of... She is, <laughs> she is insufferable. Yeah. I yeah. know this book, there's a lot of really cool superhero art in it, and, yes. like, it's fine. I love, like, the everyday yes. stuff. Like, mm -hmm. there's something very modern about For it. For me, yeah. it's the everyday and the superhero stuff are interchangeable, but not in a bad way, in a way where you're like, it's at, as much attention is being. Kept oh, it is. To I just. Both. I just think that like the the everyday stuff there, it just looks very modern. Yeah. The woman that Static was working for is a friend of his mother's, so oh. she called. Why did he get fired? Oh, he has to go be Static, oh. and you know, She's like you're not reliable. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. Well, and he keeps giving <laughs> excuses, and it's great because she, the boss. Is like, oh, is this another one? Like, and she describes a fictitious scenario, uh -huh. and he says, no, 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 that wasn't that. That was, and then he names the lie he gave her, and she's like, well, you're consistent. I'll give you that, <laughs> but you're still fired. Get out. <laughs> uh, so he goes home. His sister finds out. She calls mom. Mom barges in to Virgil's room and you know just reads in the riot act, yeah. and she's like, well, you are unreliable and you can't get a job. Which means your sister is going to have to go get a job to support us, to help, mm. to help bring in money. And she's like, wait, what? She's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nobody likes a tattletale. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, she has to go, go to work. Oh my God, I love Since I can't Mom. trust you to go consistently. Yeah. Yeah. But then when uh, he entertains Holocaust's offer, he's like, I got to go. And she's like, it's 9 o'clock at night. He's like, oh, it's a new job. And she's like, oh, you got a job that fast, huh? So he leaves, and then that's when he has like the test of morality right, with right, right. the family. Right. And when he comes home, uh, you know, he gets the talk with Larry, and then Larry leaves, and he gets the call with Frida. And so he's talking to her, and then mom comes in, and she goes, "This job of yours is no it's not a hoodlum job, is it?" And he goes, "No, ma." And she goes, "We raised you better than that." And he goes, "I guess you did." Oh, that's really sweet. And so that's. But now he needs a real job. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> well, no, he doesn't. His sister's doing the work. Well, he's got, uh, well, yeah, he's but his get mom a, thinks he has a job. He's got to get a real oh, job. No, but, uh, uh, well, he has to say, like, oh, I didn't keep that job. That's oh, you didn't a cool, keep that one either. Nah. That's a cool cover. That would be even because more that, irresponsible. Because that, like pays homage to like the original costume yes. but also gets in the people who right who know him from the cartoon yeah now of course uh the 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 milestone universe or the dakota verse was separate from dc it did have a major event called worlds collide in which the dc superman family uh crosses over with the dakota verse before my full understanding of the milestone universe and its history i assumed wrongly that worlds collide because it was like i remember when they were pitching it and when it when you, all the all the marketing for it was two friggin planets going boosh and i'm like oh milestone can't make money anymore so they're gonna dump all the characters in the dc universe no no it was just, just a crossover just, just yeah it was just it was metaphorical heads, yeah and you know what's funny is that like I assumed things were metaphorical until the Clone Saga, when it was like, oh, Spider-Man's personality split, and he's got to, like, figure out who he truly is. No, 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 it's literally two Spider-Mans, and they got to fight. And it's like, oh. Oh. And then it's like, worlds collide! Boosh! Oh, two planets are going to smash together? No! <laughs> what? So after Milestone, unfortunately, closed due to, you know, poor sales, and, you know, and, oh, it happened to emerge as the comic book market was about to completely collapse. Right. So it was the worst possible time, and the best time, because it made a, a huge groundswell of fans, but also only lasted four years. Yeah. But uh, it wouldn't be until, uh, like, the 2000s that they would even consider folding the Milestone universe into the DC universe. Mm. And in fact, they didn't introduce Static into the DC universe until Final Freaking Crisis. Really? Wow, really? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Have they done anything with him since? They did. Uh, when they established the New 52, they were just like, oh, they're just part of it. Okay. Uh, Static was, you know, a member of the Titans and, you know, all this oh. stuff. Yeah, for a brief period of time, there was actually a Static Shock comic book that came out, which, of course, between Milestone's closing and the Milestone universe folded into DC continuity, the Static Shock cartoon show came out right. to some acclaim and uh, creating a whole new generation of Static fans right. and, by association, Milestone fans. Um, but after that, that told DC, like, we're creating new fans who want this character, use him. Right. Uh, so they did have a Static Shock book that came out in New 52. Um, uh, Dwayne McDuffie passed away in 2011 hmm. and uh, due to complications and heart surgery at, at the age of 49. Oh, Ooh. my God. And uh, after that, 50% ownership of the characters in the Dakotaverse went to his widow. Okay. At okay. his wake, notable creators from Milestone and associated with Milestone, like Reginald Hudland, who had been an established comic book and TV writer, uh, conspired to create Milestone 2.0, a company that was separate from the 50% ownership that Dwayne McDuffie's widow owned. Okay. And well, and made a deal with DC Comics to reestablish Milestone in the DC Universe uh, and create a host of new books. Uh, when McDuffie's widow found out about it, she sued them. Okay. Rightfully so. Yeah. And they reached a settlement a few, about uh, 2018. Okay. We don't know what the settlement yields. Right. You never yields, do. Yeah. But uh, essentially all parties, including Dennis Cowan, have said that the stage is now set for the Milestone universe to return. That'd be great. Mm. Uh, that was in 2018. Um, up until about this past March, Cowan said, we are in development of okay. new Milestone properties. Hopefully in conjunction with McDuffie's widow, who does technically, well, or did, depending what, on what the settlement, what the settlement was. was yeah. uh, who knows? But uh, DC has tried to make announcements about new Milestone properties as early as the New 52. Mm -hmm. uh, and has failed to do it. Right. Uh, mostly because they probably have to pay people and they don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, what if I didn't mm. have to pay? Oh, then we just don't do that. <sighs> they should just be good people and pay the lady the money she's due. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the settlement... Uh, or whatever it McDuffie's is, widow I don't know. ...did say on a Facebook post mm -hmm. that um, she's happy with the results. 
Okay. And well, fine, but like well, just and, well, and that we're gonna get new books. Like she's 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 not like right. I'm happy because I got but she some had to money. hold out before that. Oh, absolutely. Right, which is bullshit. But it's yeah. like I agree. get get like Static's a great hero. Yeah, and he needs to ex- like this the. This book needs to be reprinted. We need Not to as get a, this. Like need yeah. that, but like this is like the kind of thing that DC needs because like DC tends to be like the hero on high kind of thing, where it's like you know here is this pantheon yeah, of people. Yeah, look at Superman and Batman, but, but like, and it's like Statics, how about this guy? Statics like like almost like a Marvel character who is yep. like just really cool and very approachable. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, yep. and and yeah, it's the reason why you'll never see Malibu characters show up in Marvel. Despite the fact that Marvel owns Malibu, certain creators still own some of the, some rights to those characters and would have to be paid right. any money as opposed to zero money. No! No! It's like it's $25. They get nothing! They lose! Good, Good day. day, sir! I love Static. This is a really cool... I, I think it's such a great introduction. The later part, the rebirth of the cool... Uh, you need some context, right. but it's really cool. Oh wow, that is very abrupt how they make a shift because this is the yeah the style's a little different. The ink is probably very different. See, yeah. like yeah, John Leon, yeah, yeah, like it like seemingly is like the inking is very yeah very different on yeah. this. And he might have just over like if you were saying this is sometime later, his style might have just shifted. Oh, big time! But I mean, like literally, it's not like they're like, and here's a new thing. They don't even like, bother. Like this tray just acts like it's like no, this is the rest of it. And then the next story and then you continue, and everything's different for no reason. Yeah. Oh what? no! You continue, and then Static is retired, <laughs> and it makes it even more confusing because Frida says, "You know, you never told me why you retired." He goes, "Yeah, that's right." You don't even get explained <laughs> until like until you're towards the end of this volume uh. why he retired at all, and you're like, "Wait, <laughs> what?" And then you go back, and you're like, "Oh, I missed like thirty issues of Static." <laughs> wow, I yeah. really like how they handle the cursing here. Yeah, yeah, that's just it's just. Scribbles. They scribble. write like most of the word, oh, and they scribble yeah. out a certain like number of letters. Nice. Yeah. But it's it's. I love that because it's like cursing is like jagged and bah, like it's 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 emotional and it's yeah. like, eh. it's like you got mad while you were writing it. Yeah. I, I like that. It's way better than using like stupid ampersand and <laughs> yeah and pound yeah. Pound, yeah. Fadoom uh, fanooms layer. I thought it said fadooms. Yeah. Fandoms. Fandoms layer. Is that fandoms? Yeah. Yeah. Fan of layer. That's cute. Is that the gaming thing you were talking about? Yeah. That's cute. Yeah. Look at them playing a PlayStation. Yeah, that's straight up PlayStation. Oh, don't you mean a game station? <laughs> well, I mean like it's not like a like it's like a an original we are nearly five incarnations away from that. Yes. At this yeah. point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a Playtendo. Oh, no, we know what a Playtendo looks like. This yeah. art I like this art a lot. I like it too. I like the other one better cuz I'm more detail oriented. I just think that they like this is this is like it's cool. This is matured. Yes, mm. like, I think like, you're right. Like, there's nothing wrong with this at all. No, but like this is this is cool. Yeah, but in both cases, I think you'd like you'd see it today. Yeah, like the oh, art yeah. is contemporary. This yeah. definitely, and this some of it, but like a lot of the layouts, yes. you would for the sure. The coloring is what really cements it in its time, which I don't recolor it. Leave it alone. Yeah, no, definitely leave it alone. Especially yeah. this stuff. And knowing DC, you know, they love to recolor things that don't have any business being recolored. <laughs> Oh, this is the. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, check it out if, wherever you can find it. Yeah. Um, I can't speak to the new Fifty Two reboot of Static, mm. but this go with cool. Milestone. And if you like any of them, like you're you're gonna enjoy it. Uh, I prefer Static over Icon and Hardware, but like you know, there's so much more you can get into uh, that help you. I think Icon would be the closest thing after Static for me. Uh, but hardware's fun. He's like just an angry man who's just who's like you took my shit and you didn't give me credit or money and so I'm just gonna make a suit of awesome to like to stick it to you. Which is, okay. It's a really resentful like Tony Stark, but yeah, but black. <laughs> it's it's pretty dope. So check it out. Check out Milestone. Learn more about it. And uh, if you can, uh, I I urge you to donate to the Dwayne McDuffie Fund because it is uh, helping to empower people to uh, reach their potential and, and realize their dreams uh, because uh, DC won't publish this damn thing and so I can't give you the book. But you'll find it. You you, you, you just go. You, you, you'll find it. But, uh, I'm sure you can find it used someplace. I hope so. This was mailed to me. I, yeah. I, I don't know where the hell they get these books. Huh. And I tried to get you like the first volume and it's like $75 on Amazon. So I'm like, no. The fund. But like, I'm sure you can get a good deal if you were to go to a Comic-Con or... If when you were... they start again. 
Hmm? When they start. When again. they start, yeah. When oh, you yeah. can go to a Comic Con. Yeah, when, when they're back. Yeah. Because I'm cementing right. this episode. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Cement it. Yeah. Boom. Coronavirus. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you guys next week with an all new episode. But uh, I urge you, if, if there's any homework to be had from this show, it's learn more about Milestone and learn more about Dwayne McDuffie. And, uh, and and read up on it because there's plenty of videos out there that'll tell you about it. But like, read up on it because the the real juicy stuff is like in the in the text. And yeah, if you just go to Wikipedia, it'll just tell you what happens in the book. And it's not really yeah, and it won't even really do a good job of it. It doesn't give you a feel. No, it doesn't give you for the universe. Or no, what and that's the thing is that like you you be the judge because Dwayne McDuffie had this funny rule because he after Milestone the comic company closed, he then went and continued to work for DC. He adapted. All-Star Superman, the movie. He oh. wrote and was a producer on Justice League Unlimited. He's the reason Jon Stewart is the Green Lantern on the Justice League. That's awesome. That show. Good, because I love Jon Stewart. Yeah. Like, and cool. he wrote most of those episodes. Like, every... Oh, your favorite episodes are written by him. Or J.M.D. Mateus. But he... Uh, Which but, I like as well. But McDu <laughs> McDuffie, uh, he would become, like, a mover and shaker. And it's interesting, because then... As a result of that and the popular static, DC's like, oh, well, we'll give you more jobs at at DC. And so he actually got to write Justice League for a little bit. And he he put, like, they, they, they encouraged him to put a couple of black characters on the on the team. And after all, like, at, like, they already had one or two, and then they got to three, and then they got to four. And then people stopped buying it, and retailers were like, oh, it's a black book now. And Jimmy McDuffie had this rule of three, where he's like, if you put more than three black people on a team... It is automatically considered by the culture to be a black book yeah. and will be marketed differently than it is, you know, mm -hmm. for 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 the general populace. Right. Yeah, that, I'm wow. sure that that's accurate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, no. no he's, yeah. Inter incidentally, I also forgot to mention that McDuffie, uh, before all of this, he invented damage control for Marvel. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. And wrote it, but uh, yeah, he was. He, he was an innovator and he created stuff, added to it. So, yeah. Anyway, that's it. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks a lot for watching. So long. Pile of mouths. That's a good Pile of mouths. Yeah. I don't think that's his name. Or just mouths. That would be a cool name for a hero. Mouths? Yeah. <laughs> I would not. Mouths? Oh. oh, no. Yeah, yeah. That strikes me. Never deal with Wait. mouths. <laughs> yeah, he's more effective than Batman ever could. <laughs> you I'm your strike. worst nightmare. I'm Batman. Uh huh. I'm mouths. <laughs> Yeah, and he just opens his coat, and there's just mouths, <laughs> just a black void with mouths. Yeah, so it's just cloak, there. but more yeah. scary. Yeah, because it's mouths. That is horrible. <laughs> I immediately See, was like, I think I think mouths is not as scary as like teeth. I don't know. There's teeth something... is maybe more scary. Teeth is more yeah. scary, yeah. but mouths is more like direct. Te I teeth get immediately what he's conjures about. that a horrible image. That boy. Yes. Yeah. Pass. Teeth boy. <laughs> yeah. From, uh... Yeah, from, uh... Candle Channel Cove. Zero. Yeah. The Candle mm, Cove, yeah. yeah. No. That Ugh. makes... That's a sound. That's not okay. Yeah. It's, it's, a, a, it's a little boy made of teeth. Ew. So, like, like, you... You can hear him. Yeah. yeah. It's just the sound of teeth grinding on teeth. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, and it's a boy made of teeth. And right. when he opens his mouth, he has a real mouth. Oh. And you're like, no! I don't yeah. like that. No, see, teeth... Teeth are worse than mouths, I think. Yes. Mm. That, that's interesting. If it's someone who's literally made of teeth, that well, that's made, a different thing. I yeah. just think I just feel like it's like more people. You don't really have nightmares about like a mouth. You have night, uh, nightmares about Some your people teeth. Do. Well, only because have, the teeth are the offensive element of the mouth. Yeah, <laughs> like, but, but it's like you. They're like, the swords of the mouth. Have, world. People have like nightmares about like their really teeth falling out. Like they you do. Know what I mean? yes. like, yeah, they are associated with anxiety. Yes, teeth are associated with anxiety. Yeah, yeah. but mouths consume. <laughs> But the teeth have to help with that. No, no, no. The teeth, you see, the, the, the teeth grind and rend so that it can be consumed. If a mouth can just consume, then the teeth are irrelevant. I guess that's true. Why yeah. do sharks even have teeth then? Well, because they're not, they, they're not ducks. <laughs> no, they're not like... Not. <laughs> okay, wait, wait. Would you rather that... be eaten by a shark or a giant duck? Uh, a, a giant duck. A giant duck gives me hope that I might be able to get out it's of it. Gigantic. No, if it's gigantic. You're eaten by a giant duck, you're going to wander its many stomachs for a thousand years. Well, it, <laughs> yeah, slowly. that's okay. Yeah. No, a shark, no. If I have a sharp implement, I may get out. Listen, hope with the duck. With the duck, I'm at least on land. 
more than likely. Yeah. Mm, or you're near land. I'm near land. Yeah. With the shark, no. Yeah. What, what I if he only eats your arms and legs and you drown in the ocean? What if you cut your way out of the inside of the duck and it's flying and you like just plummet to your death? That's okay. That's a risk I'm willing to take. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. That's better than Fair like... Enough. I guess it's, it's quicker than drowning. Yeah. Yes. Well, I don't know. If it's really high, it might... You know, it might take several seconds. No, that's true. Uh, well, it's wait, wait the, the, takes the duck's still there. It's plummeting with me, right? Yeah. I pluck off some of those giant feathers. I start flapping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, Cartoons okay. have taught me anything. Okay. I mean, if it's a giant duck, then yeah, some of the feathers might be might might be big enough to. Oh yeah. <laughs> glide. Well, what if you only you don't kill it? You just wound it so oh, desperately so like that you can like ride it because it's not ground. gonna it's yeah. not gonna want to die midair. Right. It will glide to doom. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah! I don't know. <laughs> but you're just hanging onto its entrails and like what, like flying it like a hang glider. No, I'm gonna climb on top! <laughs> oh yeah, and then ride it like Falcor. Yes! <gasps> oh my god. What were we talking about? Static. Static. Right. The book. 